Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD as it's commonly known, affects about 1 in 20 young people around the world. It can have a major impact on life at home, in school and with friends. Symptoms of inattention, impulsivity and hyperactivity can reduce a person's ability to control their actions and concentrate without getting distracted. Some people have expressed scepticism about the disorder, but brain imaging has shown that symptoms of ADHD are associated with a series of abnormalities in the development and function of parts of the brain. Let's look first at the cortex, the brain's surface layer. In normal development, the cortex, which plays key roles in memory, attention, thought and language, gradually increases in thickness before reaching a peak during teenage years. Scans have shown that in children with ADHD, the cortex generally develops more slowly, particularly in frontal and temporal lobe regions, which are important for memory and controlling behaviour. Typically, the frontal cortex, along with other major parts of the brain, are smaller in children with ADHD than in those without. These different parts of the brain do not operate in isolation, but interact extensively to form networks, controlling functions such as language, attention and movement. The activity of different networks increases and decreases to allow different functions to take place. For example, while you are watching this video, activity in networks involved in processing information will have typically increased, while activity in networks involved in mind wandering will have typically decreased. In a person with ADHD, the activity of these networks is impaired, and connections within the networks are disrupted. And when we look more closely at the communication between these networks, there is also disruption in the release of the chemicals, dopamine and noradrenaline, which are responsible for relaying messages between brain cells. Overall, when children with ADHD carry out particular tasks, some networks are not switched on enough, while others remain switched on too much. Research from around the world has shown widespread differences in the development and function of the brain in children with ADHD. While we can't yet use brain imaging to diagnose the disorder, the more we can learn about ADHD in the brain, the better we can understand the symptoms that children with ADHD experience in everyday life, and the more we'll be able to do to support them.